Much better. What am I doing here? Oh yeah, Facebook. We're coming for you. Computer's upset because I'm recording. Oh, there, I got that. Three o'clock, you know what that means? It's time. For the intro. <laughs> so, um, I should make sure the audio, audio should be where it's recording off the audio on the computer, so that should be fine. Does that one record audio too? And yeah, that one's also sending audio. So now we gotta play our theme music. Good one. Which one was like uh, the craziest? Something, something that's garage music. Garage music? Uh, Rock happy into the land of rhinoplasty. Let's try that. It's rhinoplasty anyway. That nose surgery. Is that what it is? Okay, that was that five sense. seconds. That was all I was. Okay, that's <laughs> no good. How about this one? No. <laughs> it's Ted and I am. Daisy Dukes, what about that? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, we're, we're trying to pick out the intro song for this episode. <laughs> R&B song, Fork and Stone. <laughs> All right, welcome to another episode of The Mindful Activist. This is your host, Bam. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Reddy, and um, I'm the host of this podcast, and I am the founder of the Global Consensus Project um, and the developer of the HiveOne.net software platform, and I'm also an elected politician, a uh, hospital commissioner in Jefferson County, Washington. I'm here today with an amazing guest, Kimberly McClurg. Is that, how, is that your last name? Yes. McClurg. <laughs> Never said that out loud before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are going, we have a really well-planned episode. You're going to have to like scoot over a little bit closer so we can get very well-planned. We have lots of ideas of what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> but really, mainly, this is yet another um, test episode. Because <laughs> as you can see, we are testing all sorts of... Um, Things. We're testing the software we're using that's enabling um, other people to join the show. We're using the Zoom software and we are recording. That's good. Um, and using this Zoom video conferencing software, up to 50 people could jump in with live video and be talking to so us. So where does it pop up if people do? We'll hear a little ding and so we'll know something's up and then we'll see a, uh, someone appear in the list. And then we will see them if they're sharing video and hear them if they're unmuted. They will see us and they can chat. Um, 
And so pretty much for every episode of The Mindful Activists, if it's as long as it's appropriate for that episode, it's not going to be an in-depth one-on-one interview. It's going to be an open discussion. We're going to try to keep it open so people can join in um, and facilitate a discussion. And then if the audience gets big enough, then we'll start inviting people to use the Hive One software to also interact with the hosts of the show. Because using that software, we could have thousands of people sending in questions and um, interacting with us. But obviously, we're not there yet. We're, we have nobody watching at the moment. Um, <laughs> Missing out, people. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is quality entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, since there's no one there, it's just up to you and me. Right. What we talk about today. Um, so, we, I normally start with a, uh, a, an introduction. How would you like to introduce yourself to the universe of people out there that, although they're not watching right now, <laughs> someday, might watch later. lots and lots of people will watch these archives, the early days of the Mindful Activist, and they're going to be like, who the heck is this middle school girl? <laughs> 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 so, uh, how would you like to introduce yourself? Well, I'm 26, first of all. <laughs> um, um, let's see. I'm just talking. I'm gonna adjust this. <laughs> I I'm not really in the political sphere much. I work for a private consultant company doing environmental things. What you have a degree in some sort of? Yes, I got my degree in uh, biology with marine emphasis. Three years Is that ago. different than marine <laughs> biology? <laughs> no, I just it's getting technical. Just, oh, <laughs> it's biology with a marine emphasis. Is it the correct way to say? Yes, that's okay. what it technically was. I think they have their own separate like marine bio degree now. Okay, but that's what it was when I was there. And you're a working marine biologist. Yes, I am. Which is kind of impressive, isn't it? Yeah, that was my dream since middle school when I was a real middle schooler. <laughs> so what's it like to play with dolphins every day? <laughs> I wish I could tell you, but I don't know that. But, uh, so you don't play with dolphins? No. Orcas? No. Captivity is pretty cruel, cool, so anyone anyway, should really play with them. Yeah. Just All right. So, do so, so what do you do as a marine biologist? Um, at my job, I help with biological reports and surveys to assess impacts to the near shore environment. Okay. So like construction. <laughs> If there's yes. any sort of work being done along the shoreline. Yes, any kind of construction along the shoreline. And you told me before, water. you uh, often are just watching and observing whether or not there is uh, marine mammals. For some projects. Yeah. The recent one I did, down by Port Orchard, was for marine mammal monitoring. Mm-hmm. But no okay. penguins. No penguins? No. Or seen. <laughs> <laughs> no dolphins. No, no, just some seals, and that was about it. All right, well, what should we talk about now? Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to be here today. No. Okay. Okay, well, we could go, um, should we go to the, the one question of this show? Should we do that? Are you ready for that one? <laughs> okay. So, Wing it. all right, uh, do you consider yourself an activist? I guess I wouldn't in the stereotypical sense that people usually think of. And what's that? Like you, you talked about last time. The, you don't like chain yourself. The person it. who chains themselves to construction equipment and that kind of thing. But um, since I got that quick uh, rundown of the different activists last time I was here, I guess I'd be somewhere in between a, was it a communicator or an educator? Or was that the same one? Or the communicator, same thing? educator. Whatever, it's something in yeah. that. You need Amy realm. Here to explain. <laughs> yeah. And uh, nurture, I think, is the other one. I guess I'm somewhere in between them. So, communication, education, nurturing, not yeah. chaining yourself to. Yes, things. I guess mine is a much more passive form of activism. Yeah. Have you ever um, gone to a protest? Um. I just kind of, I happen to be around and somewhere going on. I kind of would walk by and observe, I guess, but I didn't actually actively join any. 
but never, never mm-hmm. held a sign watching a march. No, mm-hmm. it's fun. It's an experience. I highly recommend it. Yeah, I was in pretty small towns for a while, so nothing like that really happened much. Mm. And you haven't obviously haven't been in Port Townsend long enough to have seen some of the activism no. that's gone on here. No, just like two and a half years now. So. No. So you missed. I missed the Occupy missed movement. Missed Occupy Port Townsend. There was some, some fun stuff happened during that. Yeah. <laughs> But you were a part of it. Yes, I was. So I was sold mm-hmm. by you. <laughs> <laughs> Many times. <laughs> Do you know I was part of it? Hmm. Well, um, today's episode, I sort of, I promised Kim it wouldn't like go real heavy and deep into politics or uh, into, you know, heavy topics. So that means, um, in addition to just sort of uh, uh, testing the software, we're sort of going to be very flexible about what we do and what we talk about. Um, so we could brainstorm. We're gonna, we could use the first part of the episode to brainstorm different topics we could go into. And it doesn't have to be heavy or political or activist or anything. Okay. It has to do with meditation. Meditation. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. It, it, can be, it, has to, it can be anything. So... Um, what do you think? What? Like previous ideas back here? Uh, this book is filled with doodles. Filled with this is this is my global consensus project <laughs> uh, notebook. So it has many many ideas for how this. Yeah. I mean, I have been thinking about this for a long time. Um, and I do. If we like opened up the the Hive software, I have an like a show idea list, a list of ideas of different topics that I could do a whole show about. Yeah. And so we could like look at that list sure. and we could like scan down it. Um, and so since we're going to use this computer, it'll keep videotaping it. That's fine. They'll, they'll just see us looking at the computer screen. And so we are going to the hive1.net software and we're going to go into the. Uh, The mindful activist. Um, uh, I don't even have the words for it. But the, the hive <laughs> part, the hive for the mindful activist. I guess you could easily say that. I could screen share this. So that might be. Can you get what you want to? Yeah. Let's, let's, kind of, let's do it. That's a good idea. Share screen. It didn't record very well though when I did it before. Um, no. But uh, we could just like jot some down real quick, I guess, that we see on there. Well, I think it wants it recorded on, it wants it recorded on the page. So this is the center stage. Uh, is that stuff you posted before, or does that yeah, just kind of come up? No, I posted okay. all this. this I is, approved the George Carlin video. Good. Yeah. Choice. George Carlin. Amazing. Um, before way ahead of his time. I mean, that would be a comic I would love to have on this show. Oh, I know. Could you imagine? Awesome. What are you talking about in this book? I wonder, I wonder if the audio would come through. Recording this kind of fast. We are. I think we're over taxing the computer. I don't believe anything the government. It tells me nothing. And I gotta tell you folks, I don't don't get all choked up about yellow ribbons and American flag. That's a getting blood in here. Consider them yeah, at some at some point I'm gonna need to update <laughs> this computer so I have like a beefy machine that can do everything. Do you have a favorite quote from like George Carlin? Well, I have a clip that um, where he talks about uh, there's a reason that the U.S. government and the powers that be will never really invest in our education system mm-hmm. because they want everyone to be stupid and they don't want you to be in power. And uh, he's sense. really... Only the rich people that can afford to go to private schools. Yeah. Oh, man, he was, he was a amazing... 
comedian activist. Do you have a favorite Carlin quote? Um, yeah, someone got me um, one of those day by day calendars, rip off calendars of like quotes from him, and one I really liked was um, I'm pretty sure this one <laughs> it was um, inside every cynic is a disappointed idealist. Yeah. I it's think like, really that makes a lot of sense. Inside every cynic is a disappointed idealist. No, I actually, I feel that's true of um, when I ask someone, are you an activist? And people say no, especially if they say no, not at all. And they have any sort of like energy behind their no. Mm -hmm. It's usually because the, the idealistic activist part of themselves has been so crushed and disappointed with their inability to affect the world and how horrible the world is that they just, they keep that part of themselves just stifled down. Yeah. Instead of just dealing with the disappointment every day. Well, <laughs> you know, it's like, how do you, I mean, it's psychologically necessary. We almost have to numb it, otherwise you go nuts. Yeah. Unless you can figure out a way to actually take action that makes you feel like you're accomplishing something. Mm -hmm. Which is hard. There are really powerful and clever forces at work to prevent change. Yeah. But I think we're more clever than them. <laughs> Together, I think collectively. Yeah. I think the masses just have to like figure it out. So this is the section uh, where I have what ideas for other um, upcoming episodes of my activist. Okay. Um, so there's the mindful activist interview, which is just sort of, um, is going to be like whatever my standard questions are. Um, and then egalitarian facilitation is a topic. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about. Miscellaneous mm -hmm. other questions. Lots of mindful things. <laughs> so, well, yeah, okay, there are a few mindful things. I was even used this today. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Memes, words in the universe. I have game night. I have a clown mechanics glitch in the Matrix stories. Ooh, I know. I wish I had people turn it to name to talk about that. Would be cool to some people stuff. The new version of the Clown Best movie of all time. For genre. Mm. You're right. We we do need to add memes. What's that mean? M I M. Yeah. yeah. Memes. So I put that as an answer. <laughs> My sister has kind of memes for a long time. <laughs> I said, you mean memes? Memes? Memes. <laughs> um, so. Is that no charging? I think it's. um. No, I think it's charging. It's just eating. Let's see what happens. We'll do this. <laughs> I think you're right. I think it's not charging. Yeah. Um, does this have power? Yeah, yeah that has power. Yeah, okay, now it's charging. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to go, unless you, you want to dive into one of these topics? Um, what are the ones? Um, a lot of stuff on mindfulness, dance, tactics, communication. We can talk about power. Power is pretty, pretty uh, juicy. And these are just my ideas. Mm -hmm. like, if you want to like throw an idea out there, I'll talk if you want to go into it. Okay. Any question? They're all pretty heavy. I, I tend to brainstorm pretty heavy topics. <laughs> so what's does that mean like two people like? Oh, that means there's two children underneath it. So that means I put these. I guess, yeah, these two thoughts on power. Mm -hmm. I'm just sort of put them in there. It's not important who wins a particular battle, it matters who wins the war. 
and the path person is often misapplied, and true power doesn't need an announcement. I think that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Do you want to talk about, you want to take a tangent into power struggles? The power? Sure, in more context, I guess. So, how are you when you are in a um, bigger? Um, let's go back to the screen sharing is pause. Oh, the stop sharing. Stop sharing is going to be okay. So how do you react during power struggles? Like if um, if someone tries to exercise power to make you know push you around in some way to get you to do something, raising their voice or even like you know like hanging <laughs> their fist on the table or something. Um, like is it just kind of an everyday like? Scenario, I guess. Like, well, I mean, it's you know, angry it, person at the store who just like cut a lot of morning or something like that. Well, sure, <laughs> we can start with that. Say it's okay. a random person that just starts um, um, yelling at you. Well, they were just probably yelling at me, and I didn't really know them. I would probably just kind of ignore it and walk away. <laughs> yeah. And does it impact you? Like, does it does it cause an emotional reaction inside you? Um, I think it might initially, I'd probably just be kind of shocked and then maybe slightly angry depending on what the situation was. If I felt like it just came from out of nowhere and it was unprovoked, I would probably just kind of shrug it off and be like, whatever. But. Mm -hmm. So what if it's in a more, a situation where you actually know this person and what they're trying to um, use power to manipulate you over is actually a decision has to be made about it. I would try to resolve it, you know, talk it through, but if it's with somebody who is not interested in having a reasonable discussion about it, and they just basically want to dump all of this anger on me, I just kind of tend to walk away and say, you know, let's do this another time when tensions <laughs> aren't so high. But, yeah, I'm not really big on getting into yelling matches with people and making a big scene because that's, I feel like that's what a lot of people just want half the time. They're not interested in actually talking it out. And so, um, so how do those situations tend to resolve if the person, if it's a person that's willing to use, you know, um, you know, what I would call violent language, you know, mm -hmm. just violent communication, which is just raising your voice or body language or looking down at you or whatever. Yeah. Um, so you would let them cool off and then try again yes. later to talk about it. And does, I mean, in your experience, does that work that you end up being heard and it ends up being like a equally, uh, an equally shared decision or do they still end up trying to bully you? I think for the most part, once people have a chance to cool down, you can get much more out of it. And I think you both leave feeling better about it instead of being mad and pissed off about the situation. And Maybe you should demonstrate. Maybe I should like raise my voice at you and you should show how you use your, your kin communication skills. I don't think okay. just walking out of the room really counts as like. <laughs> well, see that, so I don't know about that tactic because in my experience, that, um, in my experience, if a person is, uh, wants something, their opinion is strong enough that they'll raise their voice at you. Mm -hmm. Walking out of the room, I mean, okay, I do, I do the same thing yeah. if someone, because I've had like a boss say, you know, I've been. I've been doing this for 20 years. I know the answer. Yeah. And they're like, we're going to do it this way. And I'm like, it's fine. You're the boss. Mm -hmm. I just walk out. I've told them they're wrong. Yeah. And, they, you know, and then they do cool down. They come back. If they come back. Yeah. And they usually, usually I'm working for reasonable people <laughs> and they come back. But some bosses don't. Some, yeah. Know, 
Um, and so, that's, yeah, that's hard. And sometimes you only have uh, 15 minutes. You only have this window of time to talk to someone. Yeah. And this is it. And they are choosing to use violent communication in this moment. It's like you can't extend it. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I guess you just kind of have to pick your battles. And if it's something that, um, I guess if you have a lot, of, if you don't have much control over it, like it is a boss and they're set on doing something this way and you're trying to tell them like, it would be better if you did it this way. But you know, like if in the end, it's their butt on the line and not yours and then they go ahead and you know, yeah. <laughs> those people dig but their I, own grave, right? <laughs> but I'm just curious, like if you had to, if you had to continue engaging with someone, like what would you use? What would your tactic be if you couldn't leave the room? It's like you had to resolve it. And then does that, have you not been in that situation very often? Not very often, no. Um, but I guess, I don't know, if I had to, I just, just try to keep my cool and <laughs> appeal to the logic side as much as possible, even though it's usually rarely where people go and they get upset. I don't know, it's really hard. Half of my energy just goes into trying to keep myself calm, so I don't, you know, escalate and start yelling because that's just... That doesn't turn out well for anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really don't deal with it too much. I just want to hang around a lot of angry you should, people. You should run for office. You should, <laughs> you should become a politician because then you get to be around. I'm not like afraid of conflicts. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too lazy to put up much of a fight because a lot of in the, end, in the end, it doesn't really matter. You know, if someone wants to yell at me over a parking spot or something like that, you know, I just, I don't know. It's a lot of everyday conflicts just don't stick around long enough to, like, make me upset. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're okay. like... Everyday situations. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I could if I ever edit these. I just, I just release them. What? No. <laughs> I just, I just put them on. Editing takes a lot of work. <laughs> I'll do it then. Teach me how to do it. Okay. I'll edit this for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna edit yourself. I'll edit it. my sentence down to one or two <laughs> coherent sentences. <laughs> okay. You are welcome to edit this episode. Yeah. All right, so we've talked a little bit about power. Um, what else should we go into? What, what would be a good topic for us to riff on for the world? Um, should we talk about memes? Should we talk about? Sure, we can talk about memes. We could like. Um, Let's talk about memes. I mean, I know you are, you're sort of like an expert in memes. <laughs> I don't want expert. <laughs> nice. you, you seem to use memes as a way to communicate. They're almost like the modern, like, cave paintings, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're kind of like leaving your mark, but it's on online, which isn't, you know, as permanent as a cave, but. It might be more permanent. I mean, <laughs> Everything that we record online, it might like it's end true. up going to other planets and spreading out eventually, you know, <laughs> in like 20 years, everything that's been put online up until now is going to fit like on a flash drive, you know, that's and so you're going to be able to just like send that to Mars when we colonize Mars and, you know. They're going to be like, what is this people's obsession with these four-legged furry critters? <laughs> <laughs> The cat obsession. <laughs> yeah. The worshipped cat. <laughs> I mean, that's what it was with the Egyptians. They just had, you know, yeah. it, just, it was just memes. You know, it was <laughs> that's, just <cat> yeah. Memes. <laughs> they were just like, oh, this should be so funny. Like, <laughs> yeah, all those walls in the temples, it's like the comment section, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right, it was just comments. <laughs> We've just increased the speed at which we can, you know create our memes and yeah. get them out there. And yeah, them. maybe people wouldn't be such assholes about it. They had to chisel out each comment. Yeah. They had to put a lot more thought into it. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a, do you have a favorite 
kind of meme, like one that just like seems to sum it all up for you? Oh, I don't know. It seems to switch once in a while, depending on the situation, how my day is going. <sighs> no, I can't think of the one off the top of my head. I mean, we could actually, we could like Google memes and we could like, you know, <laughs> pull up ones that we want to. Sure. All right, we're back to the share screen. What are you making all yours lately? Like, do you have a meme generator on your uh, phone? That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> I do love the um, Star Trek guy. It's, it's Patrick Stewart. The Patrick Stewart. What's his character name? Though? The card. The card, yeah. I do like the card ones. I, just, I, I have a lot of that. I do really like yeah. I guess too well, late. I think have. Yeah, you already did, and <laughs> you can. And it's just if it's going to go out over uh, the local TV station, then I would actually have to that. Okay. All of Kim's not. swearing. <laughs> it's just like already you've hit. The, I think you've done the first two. I think it's only been two or three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you knew the risk <laughs> when you invited me on. <laughs> this is true. Maybe. That's probably a good thing where you're not covering or something while we're doing a podcast. I think way too much. There's a lot of uh, potential swimming. Yeah. Not playing volleyball. So that's the other way Kim and I know each other is uh, Kim is an amazing volleyball player. <laughs> and uh, she lets other people play with her sometimes. <laughs> Please. Matt lets people play with him. <laughs> <laughs> this is the amazing one. No, no, no. You're the amazing one. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. I think give you good setups for hits so I mean mm -hmm. and you're, you're quite a defensive it's... star all right so we are on Google images and we are going to we're gonna do a meme search so first we'll do this. what's the greatest meme of all time mm. for me it's um, it would be a matrix meme, <laughs> <laughs> the, matrix meme. <laughs> the one from Morpheus I really like that I've sent that one up twice. yeah what if I told you <laughs> the side with the USB symbol will always be the top side? <laughs> uh, there's one, uh, I see like some of the memes that are like combined, you know, with the other ones. Like a great. I also like this one. I did three movies about the Matrix. <laughs> Do you think we're living in a matrix? <laughs> Ooh, that is an interesting concept. I don't know. I mean, what if it was though? What if like everything was a simulation? What if, if you knew it was, would you change anything about your life then? Mm, if I knew that it was, um, it depends how I know. Because if you know it's a simulation, that means somehow, something has told you that mm -hmm. and so like if I got like a uh, phone call and a guy was like hey you're living in a simulation I can prove it to you watch I'm gonna make your computer disappear and they made it disappear I'd be like I'm living in a simulation could you do me some other favors <laughs> and then I would like you know I'd be like is there some other way you could hack reality like could you like fly I'd like be able to fly or what if that's all the information you got though and you showed you proof you were in a simulation well See, I'm a, I'm a skeptic. So if I was, if it, like yesterday that had happened, a guy called me and my laptop had disappeared because he had told me we're living in a simulation and he made it disappear and he reappeared. I would have now a memory of it. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, this is what my memory is telling me happened. But I don't know if my memory is accurate. I don't know if it absolutely did happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody slipped something into my drink and I hallucinated that. But, and I do have a couple stories, you know, that I could tell you that are kind of weird like that. But, you know, it's like Joan of Arc. You know, she was um, walking in a garden and she had a vision of, I think it was like two saints or something. And they spoke to her and they told her. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like St. Catherine and... Was it? I'm just amazed you got St. Catherine. Like, this is your... Your Catholic? Your Catholic education. Yeah. <laughs> Let's pick some of it up. Catherine and uh, I can't remember the saint though. Oh, you know, we got like the source of all knowledge right here. <laughs> oh, yeah, we can Google it. <laughs> so, on oh, this incredibly overtaxed computer. Okay, but anyway, so yeah, I want to hear about the Joan of Arc. Well, it's just that 
if I was walking in a garden and two saints appeared and I saw them and they like did magical stuff and they told me a whole bunch of stuff that I was supposed to do with my life and then they disappeared, mm-hmm. I'd come here and be like, I had this really trippy vision, but it, I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't, you know, a, uh, a magical being appearing at the foot of my bed every day at 4 p.m. is not enough to make me believe everything that that magical vision says. I would listen to it. <laughs> I would talk to it. I'd find it very interesting. But let's see if you weren't mentally ill or something. I would, yeah, it's a doctor. <laughs> okay, well, let's say you knew it wasn't on your head. You had irrefutable proof you were living in one. Okay. You know. Okay. So, like, I guess, I don't know. How would you, would you still live life the same? Well, or one question I would have. Would you just do whatever you wanted? Right? Because what if everyone around you, all the people you know, are all just like computer programs? No one's really real. Well, that's kind of like the Truman Show, but every, right. well, everything's like digital, right? You're in this like. Well, that would be tough. World. So that that would mean like you're not real. You're yeah. a computer program. Yeah. What if I wasn't real? Well, okay. Like, that, would you live your life like Grand Theft Auto? Like, just take cars? Like, just make mayhem? Or you just kind of go about your life still and. Uh, no, because honestly, I kind of, that's already kind of the way I see people. Yeah? Yeah. I already kind of see people as of questionable reality. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people live in their own reality, so that's not. Yeah. No. Too far to stretch, I guess. So I like, you know, I look at, I mean, you don't know. I don't know how real you are, how alive you are in here. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I actually don't know if my consciousness really is completely dependent on this brain that I think I have. Yeah. I don't know that I'm even in a body. So I might be a, a software program in a computer. And I mean, if we're in a matrix, I most likely am a software program as well as you. doesn't mean we're not alive. It just means we don't actually have these bodies. It just means we are in these giant computers. For some reason, someone built these computers. <laughs> I would, I would, I'd really, really be wondering about that. And, I, you know, I probably would spend more time doing, like, what we're doing now, like, talking to the world, mm-hmm. but I would be talking to the makers of the Matrix, and I'd be like, hey, makers of the Matrix, why are you doing this? Why did you make all of this? Um, yeah, you wanna- it's, it's just, like, one big experiment, though. Like, they're just kind of letting you... Like you're the only uh, living. Are you representative of the matrix? Is this? Are you? This is my finally. Someone's telling me the truth. That it's just a big experiment, just to <laughs> to watch us do whatever. Could be. I, I mean, seriously, I wonder about this all the time. Really? I wonder about this all the time. Like that. I think that whether or not we're living in a matrix, we could be. Um, But I mean, would that change your perceptions of like what's ethical, what's moral? Uh, no, not if at you didn't all. perceive anything as real around you, like. Well, you're saying. I mean, <laughs> you are still real. You know, you are still. Yeah, real in a sense. If I thought you were a robot, if I thought you were a robot that had that actually didn't experience pain, mm-hmm. that there was actors controlling you remotely, yeah. that would, yes, that would, um, that would affect me. But I don't, I think it's possible. It's like the matrix, so you're just like a program. It'd be, like, hell, it'd be nice, but like you're still, you're not technically real, right? <laughs> well, it would depend if I felt like you, like, were lying to me when you, like, said I, you know, hit you and you experience pain. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yes. I mean, I basically say that if I feel like someone is lying to me about things, I treat them differently. So, but if I feel like someone's being honest, you know, like, like in a matrix, um, like animals, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. would I be cool with animals? Like, no, cause I, I trust that they actually are experiencing pain and I don't, I don't enjoy other things, other people suffering. Mm-hmm. Um, not fixated on like you know taking care of everyone in the world yeah or something but i don't but anyways that's all (laughs) me more importantly what about you what would it do do you think we're living in a matrix 
you seem to ask those questions pretty strongly, like, you know. It was just, it was just kind of coming. It was just coming to you? It was just coming to me. Well, no, I think it's interesting to, like, play out. Do you think I'm a computer programmer? Do you think I'm a real? Yeah, it could be, but that's Probably not. Do you think I'm a real human being? Yeah. yeah. I think I could pretty safe and see you real. Know. But maybe I just bought into it so much. I just don't question it. Is there a test <laughs> in the have you ever seen um what the heck was it? That uh, movie with uh, I think it was some Ford Blade Runner. No, I haven't watched Blade Runner yet. So there's a test in Blade Runner. They do see if the person is a robot. Okay. Uh but uh, they, they like shine this, this magic thing in your eye, <laughs> and uh, they watch your pupils and they ask you questions, and somehow you can tell. Oh, but but maybe we could. What would be a test or something like a question we could ask each other? Ask a question that would like prove. Would it be like one of those tests you for like artificial intelligence? Could be. Ask a question that would be difficult for um, a simulated. Matrix entity to answer. No, I mean no. Something like a riddle or something like that. No. Mm -hmm. okay, How? All right. I'll, I'll I'll go first. Then. Okay. Um. What's the most important thing in life? And if the head explodes and you know they're, <laughs> they're not real. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just stabbing in the dark. We're doing matrix test questions. Maybe we'll find the right one. Those questions? That's the most important thing in life. Did you ask me that one's been hurting you? It's quite possible. I only have like three questions I ask people. <laughs> I just keep asking everyone the same questions over and over. I've been asking that question since college and I actually stopped for like 25 years asking it but I used to ask people That's the most important thing. Yeah. Like what to each other that whole baseline. Like it's, I'm, asking need you. Take care I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Biologist Matt, so I <laughs> I think from the most <laughs> you're trying to get like the teacher or like I'm getting you're, too technical. You're, you're asking for hints on what the answer is, but the answer is whatever you say. Unless you're like software program, but it doesn't even have its own answer. <laughs> <laughs> can't compute it. No, there's nothing important in life because you're not alive. You need emotion and <laughs> Uh, are you refusing to answer the question and we move on? Is that what you're doing? No, no, yeah, I'll answer. Um, I think you're not saying that's me. I said laughter is most important thing. That's an interesting answer. A lot of good things come from that. Do you have, uh, like, so what does that mean about you and stand up comics? Like, do you feel like comedians have a special place in the universe, or do you think laughter is the most important thing in life? Are they? Very good ones. <laughs> Yeah, what makes you laugh? Memes? Besides anything besides memes? <laughs> I think that's funny. I mean, obviously not in a very cruel, <laughs> deprecating way to somebody else. It's uh -huh. one of its friends. Yeah, that's not your type of humor. Well, sometimes, but you know, I can't be dick about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She also said. Uh, <laughs> we should make notes like that. <laughs> Thirty minutes in, sometimes again. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and you should be thinking of the question that I asked you a question to test you. You can give a question back to try to like, you know, figure out if I'm like a software program in the matrix. So you're welcome to ask that anytime. How about like a morality question? Sure. Whatever. Real? Because I just struggled this morning about like, you have a train and it's going up to a fork and you have five people tied up on the track on one side and the other side is one person. And it's going to hit the five people unless you make the choice to switch the track with the one person. You have to decide. So you take out five people once, like let that happen, or do you save them with the one person? That, that program would be able to. That's a great question. <laughs> you, don't need to, you don't need to analyze the question, you just ask it. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Um, and you don't care. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, 
Okay, that is a, that's actually a classic philosophical question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just delaying now answering it. Um, I feel our, like it would be pretty easy from a computer point of view. For me, it totally depends who the people are. It's just random strangers. Well, random strangers. Yes. I don't know. You don't know any of them. They could be the worst people on the planet. Okay, the know. train is going to run over the group of people, five people? Yes. Or I flip it and it, they run over the one. Yeah. So, and honestly, I mean, this is honestly the way it would work with me. Mm -hmm. Do I see them? Do I see the people? Because that means the one person I would see in the group I would see. And so I'd be immediately getting a lot of information mm -hmm. about how old they were, yeah. what gender they were, do they look like jerks? <laughs> you know? It's like, this well, would I mean, all impact me making this split decision. But it, you only have like, say, 10 seconds to take this information and you see them. But it's I mean, like dating. You only need like a look at someone and you can you have like cast all these impressions and judgments. So we can take out that if you say, I can't see them. If you, if you like eliminate me no. being able to see that makes it easier i think if you can't see people all right because i would totally you're like oh look at that guy he's wearing skinny jeans <laughs> <laughs> i've been doing humanity a favor here yeah that is okay in a split second i probably would save the group mm -hmm. unless you that know like something i would say <laughs> like, that was movie i don't know <laughs> Well, you, you say the greater you know, probability lives there. Well, you do that. Support the greater good. <laughs> I mean, most likely, it's, it's definitely. But then, I wouldn't enjoy it. But that means that you're choosing to kill a lot of the person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although I would probably switch it and then do something to try to save that person. <laughs> And then I would like make it part of my life's mission to explain to people, don't stand on the way of the tracks. You know, it's like, that is a really dumb thing to do. <laughs> well, these people are tied up. This is like some sick matrix this simulation is, So experiment. this is like Saw. This is like that movie <laughs> yeah. where they're setting up these horrible, like, like Dr. Phil and Shaquille O'Neal are tied in their <laughs> pipes and they, <laughs> and they have to like cut their feet off or something to get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you find this these kind of like six scenarios entertaining? Well, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I figured a morality test would be a good one to do. All right. Okay. Um, so we've each asked one question, and you think I'm a robot? Yeah. Well, you did guess the answer that I figured a robot would probably guess, but only a human would just <laughs> kill the. But if, you know. It seems like robots would just choose the brutal or, uh, sociopathic answer, and that way you'll sound human. That's true. Yeah. Well, I'm just going by the rules from the Disney movie, so yeah. it could be different. Yeah. In the scenario. All right, I've got a question. Okay. Um, this will test whether or not you are human or a machine. Can I borrow $10? <laughs> Right now. What if I have $10? Do you have any cash? $2 maybe? How about $2? Sure. That's what we're going to do. Let's take it. <laughs> Alright, I don't know if that didn't work. Maybe $100 or something. What about Peter say no? I don't know. I <laughs> tried to give it some consequences. <laughs> okay. Um, do you have another one? Or should we um, move on to our next topic that we can have? Sure. Should I introduce the topic, Matt? I, don't know. Um, I think you should introduce the topic. Um, I think it would be any years at all so uh, None <laughs> there, and no one. No, we haven't had any kids at this point. Okay, yeah, cool. So no one's, no one's watching. Cool. You know, if I had had another device going, I could have like put it onto you now, and we might have you know, you know, using that, we might mm -hmm. have some drop-ins. So, uh, yeah. So Kim, why don't you go ahead and you intro this topic? Oh, you're in short. Uh, okay, well, I'll I'll give it the first part. So Kim and I have been planning this podcast for weeks and we brainstormed a lot of different topics. And this topic 
Kim thought would be really interesting and fun um, and thought provoking. And so I wanted to take it from there. Um, <laughs> you could throw me into the bus. <laughs> <laughs> just go, just go. It's just, you know. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't know. You can do the movie genre. Movies? Yeah. We can do movies. All right. Okay. Greatest. What, what do you want to do? Greatest. Let's start with the greatest movie of all time. Oh, we'll, we'll work our way no, back. That's no. Smart. All right. Just. How about this? Can you name a single movie? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it easier. Kim, name a movie. <laughs> See, I was introduced to TV until like five years ago. What? <laughs> <laughs> um. How about, oh, okay, how about what is, like, a movie you love to watch, but you'd be super embarrassed to tell anybody you actually like a guilty pleasure movie? Guilty pleasure movie. Um, Grease. What? It's like a classic. You'd be embarrassed if they watch Grease. I hate God. musicals, and I would admit, really, that I love Grease. I like Grease. I own I mean, the soundtrack. I like musicals, yeah. West Side Story. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, that's not bad, yeah. Steve Martin. But I mean, I'm not really like embarrassed to say I like these. Um, but you know, also mine though. You can never admit. You can even edit that out so you never admit. Um, you know, I like dancing movies like Footloose and Dirty Dancing and Flash but Dance. Like, horrible movies. Like, is there any kind of like national like, movie or something that you like never get passionate about? Like, if you're in a group of people, it's almost like, oh, that's gonna be the worst ever, and you're like, yeah, it's really pretty good. I like Super Bad. Yeah, that's a good yeah, movie. That's okay. And uh, uh, like Tootsie or C Tootsie. <laughs> That's what doesn't happen. Yeah. He dresses up like a woman. Yeah. I think it's actually pretty good. It's though. amazing. So, <laughs> it's a great movie. <laughs> well, it's it's not a like guilty pleasure. It's finally accepted that it's good. <laughs> Dances with wolves. What? <laughs> uh, it's a wonderful life. I'm sorry. You're just a movie snob. I never watched anything. It's be horrible and embarrassing to admit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I, you know. Uh, I, do you have one? Music? Is there any music? That I'm embarrassed. You'd be embarrassed I guess that's too, like Britney Spears or something. I like some Britney Spears. Oh, her good, her early stuff was good. Yeah, I was really into that. Yeah. Um, here, here, someone doing out of the frame, to back and forth. Oh, I'm sorry. They, they don't want like me on. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, totally like yeah. <laughs> wheel like, of the chair. Like, <laughs> all over here for you to look at. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is like the video is so far behind us. I wonder how it's doing with this recording. Sorry, <laughs> sliding out of frame. Okay. Okay. Do I have um, any um, mm, I'm trying to think of music too. Music that I find embarrassing that I like. Um, The Big Chill has great music in that. The Big Chill? Mm -hmm. I think I've seen that one. Is it a stoner movie? Mm -hmm. Is it that one where they're all like in a ski lodge or something? Well, yeah, because somebody dies. They're like all friends in college, mm -hmm. and then a guy commits suicide. They actually played by Kevin Costner. Um, oh, but, it's not uh, the same movie. Well, Kevin Costner's not in the movie, <laughs> oh. but um, he's the body in the casket. You never see his face. It was his first movie. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, seen Kevin Costner trivia. Yeah, and so um, they all hang out at the for a weekend. Okay. And they rekindle some romances and stuff. And I do think they smoke pot at some point in that movie. I don't think that makes it a stoner movie, but. <laughs> okay, I think I'm thinking of a different one anyway. But it has the most amazing soundtrack, you know, with like, um, the, you know, joy to the world and all these like, and I heard the great through the grapevine and old classic. I don't know, 60s. I guess it's 60s music. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. 60s or 70s? Yeah. 60s, I think. 60s, 70s. I think it's 60s. Creedence, Yeah. Maybe some Creedence. Yeah. 
Um, Guilty pleasures. Come on. What is, or how about this? A movie or a song you're incredibly embarrassed to tell the world that you like, okay. or an anecdote that's incredibly embarrassing to share with the world, or anything that's really embarrassing that you don't want to tell the world. You should tell the world right now. <laughs> Oh, I'm good that way. How could you not want to? <laughs> um, yeah, I have a lot of embarrassing moments, but I'll just, just go through all of them. We'll just go through all of them. We only have so much time now. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even, so That I don't have. I don't have a timer going. All right, so that means we must have been going basically an hour. Like five minutes and a recording still going. I don't know. Okay, so. Um, okay, well, the first one that pops to mind is in, who was I was in high school? Did you ever do those tests when you're in school where, like, you had to sit down and fill out, like, this questionnaire about, like, drugs and alcohol and stuff, you know, like, great, how often you did it, how much, whatever, for, like, state statistics, I think? It was Maybe. Right? Sure. Well, but anyway, we had to do one of those. It was, like, four pages long. And so they just spread us out in the gym to, like, work on these and fill these out. And I was sitting cross-legged and doing mine the whole time. And... I was finally done, and I was one of two people left sitting on the floor in this huge auditorium, and everyone else was up in the bleachers. It was done. They just kept us all. Like, I was in a high school with, like, 70 people. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So we were all just all hanging out in the auditorium. So everyone's up in the bleachers. He's done. And it's me and one other person sitting down on the floor, like, filling this out. And I got up to, sorry, turn mine in. <laughs> And my legs had fallen asleep, so I told him I was doing it, but I didn't realize it. And so I got up, and I took one step and just face it on the floor. <laughs> and it was just like those movies. Everyone's just like cracking out. <laughs> I would have been more embarrassed if the feeling was coming back. And so I just felt like my legs were being stabbed with needles all over. And it really hurt. So that took a lot of the like focus away from the embarrassment. <laughs> so I just laid there waiting for my legs to feel again. And the person got up to hand theirs in. And I just like, hey, you didn't sleep. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. Yeah. That's Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Yeah, we don't have video of that or anything. No. You do have a video, though, that, you know, maybe next time you come on, we could share a video instead of your public speaking of some, like, Oh, know. I think it was from Long Lost. Yeah. <clears throat> but what was it? It was, a, it was a video of you doing right. some sort of presentation. My public speaking presentation. Back in what? Um, let's see. I think it was my sophomore year of college, so yeah. which one? Uh, well, maybe maybe we can find that for a future episode. Maybe I don't know if I could look it up. I wonder <laughs> if my teacher would still have it. I'm friends with her on Facebook. She probably keeps all these to her lap. So maybe she's bored. She probably subscribed to the last one and just watches like the worst presentation she's ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. I see that. Or maybe not because she's a good person. She's really nice. All right. Well, shall we wrap up the episode? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So thank you so much for co-hosting another episode. This was, it seems like everything worked pretty well. Let's see how the recording comes out. Every time we do this, it makes it easier um, for us to do future ones. Um, and to every anyone that ends up watching this uh, video clip, uh, we are gonna keep doing this. And eventually as we get our uh, technique down and we get our uh, viewership built up, we are going to invite more and more people to join us and uh, participate in the discussion and you can go to the hive1.net uh, website and into the mindful activist node to see what uh, different topics we might have uh, for future episodes um, and you can even vote on topics there decide which ones uh, you want to have us talk about in future episodes and i uh, think that's about all uh, should we do some closing music yeah we should so we will. We're going to stop the video and share a closing song. All right, Kim, go ahead and start singing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't assault any of yours with that. Let's see, this is a little cat at the beginning. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.